But what I wanted to ask you was, what are your strategies for longevity, cognitive um, optimization, that kind of stuff? Is it um, the usual sort of sauna, cold shower, fasting kind of thing, or is there some other things that you find really uh, useful? Well, I think we're always going. We're always. Uh, I think. If, if we talk about saunas, there was a, a recent Finnish sauna that, um, study that looked at uh, uh, a middle-aged man. I think it came out last year, and what it showed is that there's a there's, an, there's a there's a direct relationship between the amount of saunas that the that the men took and cognitive decline. So what they were saying is that the more saunas you take, the less cognitive decline yeah. risk you have. Now I look at that in many ways, and 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 so without going into the science of saunas, saunas are good. Yeah. Whether it's a Finnish sauna, whether it's in far infrared, or how we want to look at, just saunas are good. Yeah. Now I look at that and and I think, well, in many ways, what you're doing is you're having a workout, yeah. and so and so is it that the more saunas you have, the more it equates for you having a workout. Then you know, and that has multiple effects on cognition and longevity. I mean, from purely from a cognition point of view, I mean, I can sit in the sauna still. I've got a far infrared at home. And, you know, just, and I don't even really feel, I mean, once you get used to him, you don't really feel the effects of the heat. But still, on sometimes, I'd be just sat there ticking away at 120. And, and what that is doing is, again, it is, it is allowing blood flow to get up to the brain. Because a lot of dementias are, you know, vascular dementias. And yeah. um, what do we mean by that? Well, the reality is, is that the more sedentary you get, the, the less likely you can push blood flow up into the brain, and the less likely you can profuse the brain with oxygen. But importantly, bring nutrients to it. And so I think that it's one of the huge values with regards to, you know, being in a sauna. I think it brings all those aspects to mm. it. Um, but what, what I do for longevity, I think it's still the basics work. I think number one probably would be if you're not sleeping optimally, then, you know, that would be, uh, yeah. that be, and I, I think for us, cause obviously we have now, we've been three, four years with an established Bresden, um, protocol, um, and many individuals present in, in, in many ways. Um, um, we've just had a recent one that were on the MRI scan. They're showing a, a brain that, that doesn't look, um, the brain looks like it's got some shrinkage on it, um, which is a normal what you would see from a cognitive decline. You know, shrinking muscles, shrinking brain. Yeah. They all, but interestingly, again, you know, if, even if you look at that, so one of the things I was discussing with that chap is that um, – your brain, your, there is a direct relationship between HbA1c and brain volume. Of course, the higher it is, the lower the, 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 the reduced brain and volume. And of course, there's a direct relationship between BMI and brain volume within reason, of course, because mm. obviously, you know, we know. I mean, and listen, I'm a fan of BMI, but BMI has to be put into it. It's no good for athletic populations, of course, yeah. but it's a pretty solid marker when we're talking about sedentary normal population groups. And so there's a very strong relationship with it. So for me, I don't get too carried away with regards to humans. Humans are designed for um, high physical activity, which in, you know, if we're talking about longevity is moderate at best. Um, i.e. intensity mm. and we had this conversation a few years back remember and we talked about how I'd change a few things around so as I said I think I think humans should be physically active for much of the day yeah. but that physical activity is moderate at best and then just occasionally be strong enough to be able to handle a full-on scrap yeah. because you're going to need that which is interesting because when we're looking at some of the, the mechanisms of longevity then mobility um is one of the key factors shown in the science that is one of the key factors of, of longevity in humans. And I, so, so with some of the, some of the older um, patients that we see, and I think on the gym based side, one of the things that we, we, I've been keen to do over the last couple of years is that we are putting the, them in situations just occasionally where we've really got to expose those big fiber units because most of the risk as you get older is risk of fall. Yeah. And that fall happens not so much because your muscles. So this is the argument in regards to, um, I can't remember a bloody term. There's another term, not sarcopenia, but there's another term that is related to 
not so much how much muscle you have, but how well you use that muscle. And I'll think a bit. I'll think about it in a minute. So, so I'm interested in in and again, this was classical function. I'm interested in. We've got to train them just occasionally, so those big fire, those big units switch on because that neurally the brain's communicating with them. So in many ways, we're looking at slight reaction time processes uh, and training for them because. If mobility is the key and falls are one of the major influences on on you living longer, yeah. it's important that we're in the gym that we just don't have them on the Pilates bench all the time, yeah. because because training adaptation is only adaptation across what you're training them. So that's what I'm very keen to do from a point of view of we try to stimulate our older groups um, to the fact that. Um, you know, we're always got them as almost in sort of, and we're not going to use the stability, but un- instability training. You know, how are they going to react from me pushing them in, in a way that they've got to try and retain the balance? Mm. Um, and that usually becomes from the reactive type movements that are going to fire those big units and get that nervous system firing at a point. So, so when we're talking about longevity, I think we are in a situation where, uh, particularly if we look at Longo's research, um, that we are designed probably not to eat too much food. So yeah. going hungry occasionally is probably a good thing to do. Um, we're finding more and more, um, we do a lot of um, um, genetics around um, mind now, um, and that's been quite revealing from a longevity perspective. A lot of our cognitive decline patients are not APOE4, um, but they are very much inflammatory-led. And so we see the genetics of why maybe they're in trouble, and that is because they're highly inflamed. Yeah. And so that is one of the things we get, this neuroinflammation. Um, and that's really interesting because trying to deal with that has led us down the path of uh, I'm more and more moving over to we need to find better delivery systems of nutrients for them because usually the GI tract is compromised and therefore we may be giving them three or 400 quid's worth of supplementation that's not quite mm. hit the mark for, for the cost it's going to be. So we're definitely investigating into that. We've got some nice little trials going on with a few patients with regards to different delivery systems. We've got an intranasal one at the moment, which seems to be working okay. Have, have, you, have you tried Patch MD? Have you tried the, the transdermal patches? No, for, for delivering uh, yeah. just... Multivits, omega three, glutathione, all that kind of crowd. It's a, it's an interesting one. Yeah, but a few people use it and find it really useful, um, uh, and they prefer it to swallowing pills. Yeah, and Paul, I think you know, again, I like where we are now. We're 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 in a situation where we've had enough time, and enough patients to go. Mm, okay, and um, it might. I've had too many patients where we've tried to treat and, you know, and, and treat for too long with an appropriate supplementational strategy that's just not worked. Doesn't work, yeah. And, and that's using really high quality brands. And we're like, mm, okay, so why isn't this working? And then for me, it is a question of, well, because there is clearly something that is compromised about the GI tract. Mm. And so now I don't really bother too much because, you know, I want to try and, you know, and, and actually move into whether it's liposomal delivery or something else. It's a question of this makes more sense at this stage. Um, and, you know, there's, I, I, again, I know I keep seeing your your um, IV. IV stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, again, I suppose that's something that we may look to investigate um, in the future. Um, again, I... I I, I probably have a bias that there's a few things I look at that and I think mm, this just doesn't make logical sense to me. You know, why you would, the risk of IV and how long, you know, the kinematics of certain vitamins and minerals would last. But I think there's a, there's a real problem in health and fitness and wherever or longevity where your bias rules your decision making. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's really dangerous. Um, I agree. From points of view, of- with, 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 with IVs, I think it's very important to know the the quality and the um, and the product that's being used. There's a lot of this. Uh, there's a. I'm not going to name them, but there's a chain of franchises that are popping up everywhere um, that are promising you the world, um, being run by people that don't know what they're doing. 
um, and it's just a franchise model and the product is very, very poor. Mm. And um, there's, there's no real value to it other than you get, you know, a base of saline. So you get a bit a bit hydrated. But the, but the vitamins and minerals I use are, are, are really not useful. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the bits that we use are, are, are very different. But also the IV laser stuff that... Um, that I I use, do you know what? Whether it works or not doesn't matter. It makes me feel great. Yeah, and well. and um and and there is a lot of research behind it. And also, sorry, just on a on a, on a tangent, I've been also using some um, infrared um, uh, light work on some injuries. Sure, and that's really benefited me. Even a, a torn meniscus that I've got, I really feel that that's brought some some value to it. Um. So yeah, there's so many other, like you say, so many delivery systems of various yes. benefits that we can use, yeah. um, and it's not just a, a multi bit out of a pill kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So, so if we, if we go back to Longo um, and his research, really, I mean, yeah, I think humans are designed for um, a large amount of physical activity, but but moderate in nature, yeah. um, in general, um, and I think we are in a situation where it's okay to go hungry. Yeah. Um, and and now, you should. Yeah, and I think what his process has, has looked at, and certainly particularly his um, his prolong strategy, it is that there is a uh, you know there is a, a regeneration of your own stem cells at the end of it, uh, and you know, and I look at that and I think, wow, okay, well that is that is quite beneficial. I mean, that's a cheap way. If it does, yeah. um, it's a cheap way to get some stem cell therapy. 